in one more in one moment let's let us quickly have a word of prayer heavenly father we say thank you thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace thank you Lord, for who you are father be thy exalted lord we have come before you tonight to learn at your feet to receive strength to receive your word holy spirit open our eyes of understanding to see what the natural eyes cannot see open our ears to hear what the natural ears cannot hear open our hearts to begin to conceive, to know great and mighty things. Let our hands begin to handle great things in this season, in the name of Jesus. The grace to be, the grace to be doers of your word. Let that grace be released upon us tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, open up our understanding. Open up our understanding. Open up our understanding. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. I decree direction into every heart tonight. I come against every spirit of depression. Let depression be deleted in the name of Jesus. Lord, increase our passion for you. Strengthen us afresh tonight. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Tosin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I want to believe everyone can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, um, today's um topic that we'll be looking into. Thank God for that. We already prayed, and I pray that the Lord continue to strengthen you, you and your wife, and also thank you once again for another opportunity to be here to share you know the heart of the father with us so the topic we'll be looking tonight is titled carelessness and abuse carelessness and abuse so i gave it an acronym which is cab that's carelessness and abuse and you know if we we'll, i mean if we'll be sincere with ourselves and look at you know so, so many accidents that happen on the way, you know, especially, you know, for those that are driving, we we'll know that it's as a result of, you know, people being careless with, you know, the driving or maybe as a result of them have abused, you know, the drink, alcohol, you know, which so ever way. And, you know, this made me to begin to think that, that even as human, there's some part of our life that if we are careless with or if we should abuse them, we'll get into a certain kind of situation that we don't want to, just like those that are driving, whenever they are careless, accidents happen. And for some, it could be fatal that they cannot even recover from it. So we'll be looking at, you know, lives of those that were careless in some aspect of life and also those that were what, that were careful. And the first person, you know, let me say the first person, we'll be looking at God, you know, because if you look at God, he is someone that he had seven days, right? Seven days to make the whole creation. But this is um, our God that said, oh, instead of me making this creation in just one day, you know, because I look at God as someone that he can do this creation in one day. He can decide to like make the firmament make human being, make everything he wants to do just in one day. But he decided that I'm not going to do that. And he began to do what? Give everything its own day. The first day, the second day, the third day, even up to rest. He had to do that because what? he chose to be careful. He didn't want to abuse his power. He had the power to do it. I know for some of us, even when we have the power to do things or when we're in the place of authority, how do we exert it? Do we say, oh, because you are in power, because you have the, you know, authority to do some things and you begin to use it anyhow, you begin to abuse it. Our own Lord was not like that. God didn't do that. He didn't say, because I have power to what, create everything at once. Let me create it at once. Because if it was me, I'm looking at, okay, if I'm going to make a creation, why can't I just create everything in one day and I go and rest for six days? 
God could decide to use rest for six days and he can make the creation for one day. What he decided to do was make the creation for six days and he rested for what? For just one day because he was taking what? His time. He didn't want to abuse any what? Any creation that he's supposed to create in the second day and make it on the first day. He didn't want to be careless with what he was doing because he pays attention to everything that he's doing. So also as Christians, we don't want to just muddy things up and be like, oh, let me just quickly do things together. You know, sometimes the time you're supposed to use to pray, you're supposed to study the word of God, you feel like I can just do everything all at once. I can be reading the Bible and yet I'm trying to do my assignment. You know, we are just trying to do everything together. And yet there won't be productivity. Our God took his time to do all this because he does not want to be what, careless in any way in the things that he's doing. And that is why everything that God made was good. Ask yourself, the things you are doing, is it good? Because by the time you begin to do things all together, all at once, all because you feel like, oh, let me do everything together right now. Ask yourself, is it good at the end of it? There's also someone, that's the devil. He abused his relationship with God. I want us to look into Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to see how the devil, how Satan, you know, he abused relationship that he had with the father. Ezekiel 28, I'll read from verse 12 to 19. Son of man, sing this, gen sing this funeral song. For the king of Tyre, give him this message from the sovereign Lord. You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. You are in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green burial, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis lucy, turquoise and emerald all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold they were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your rich commerce lead, led you to violence and you sinned. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, almighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defied your sanctuaries with your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground and in the sight of all who were watching. All who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have become Come, you have come to a terrible end and you will exist no more. This is all about what Lucifer, this is about what the devil. This was someone that had access to what? To the holy, to the world, to the mountain of God. But you know, and that is why we're talking about carelessness and abuse. Sometimes we have access to some relationship. We have access to some certain, um, certain kind of people. But because we don't know how to do what, deal with what, such relationship, we don't know how to curtail ourselves. We abuse it. And because of that abuse, it can lead to what, to so many things. Imagine devil right here. Someone that was, he had beauty. He had access to the mountain of God. But because what, pride was found in him. The Bible said that what, until the day evil, evil was found in him. And what was that evil? He decided in his heart that he also wants to be worshipped. And you know, for some people, you know, when you begin to relate, imagine when you have a, a, I mean, a friend 
that brought you and said, oh, my friend, I want you to what? You know, come to this workplace. You know, I'm working here as a what? As a general manager. I also want you to come and work here. And now before you know it, the person, you know, you are brought into a what? Into a sector to come and work. And immediately in your heart, you're beginning to imagine, oh, how about me working so hard? You know, I want to be the one towards to replace the person that would that brought me into this place. We have to be careful of what of what we think in our hearts. And let me show you the particular place that devil said to himself. He was the one, he decided that he also wants to be worshipped like God. He wants to have praise out for himself. Despite the fact that what he is someone that God has ordained. Imagine the Bible said, I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. He was not contented with that position that God has given to him. He wanted to be God. And we can see it in what? In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, verse, chapter 14, from verse 12 to 15. We can check Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Yes, verse 12. It says, How you are falling from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning, you have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heaven and be like the most high. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to his lowest depth. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. This is someone that would have had access, but yet he was not contented and he chose to abuse the words, the relationship, the status that he had with God. All because what he said to himself. You know, this is it's not like he announced to everyone and said, This is what I want to do, or even announced to God. This is something he had in his heart. And you know, sometimes when you begin to think about something in your heart, when you begin to perceive some things in your heart and think, Oh, this is what I want to do, this is what I feel like. The Lord is watching and he's saying, No, you can't have this kind of thought in your heart and think things will go well with you. There are so many people in the world, in the Bible, that have come to discover that, well, that they were careless in one thing or the other. And part of that person is what? Is Esau. If you look at the life of Esau, Esau was what? Was careless with what we call appetite. I look, I want us to look at it. Let's go to Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Verse 29. One day, Jacob was cooking some stew. Esau arrived home from the wilderness, exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I am starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob said, but trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Look, I am dying of starvation. And um, said Esau, what good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, First, you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all his right as the firstborn to his brother, Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate the meal, then get up and left. He showed content for his, for his right as what? As the firstborn. And I look at a man that God, you know, this is the person that what? He is the first right. But because he chose to be careless with the words, his appetite, it appeared as if he was hungry. It appeared as if he was dying. And I look at it, I'm like, okay, if someone is actually dying and the food was being served to the person, tell me, will such a person have the strength if he has really eaten to his satisfaction and now stand up and went his way? It's not. Even if you are not dying, if you are very, very famished and you are so hungry and you just get up 
and someone just serve you food and you eat to the fullest, will you have the strength to stand up? If you are really served a word, a bowl of rice that you know you ate to the fullest, it's not possible because the food is going to weigh you down because you've been so tired and the food you've not eaten as what, you know, just made you so tired, you just scatter on the floor. But this is Esau that thought he was dying because of food. And he said that what well, Jacob served him was lentil soup. He served him some bread and he just left like that. Someone that said he was dying. All because he chose not to go out. Don't forget, Esau is what? An hunter. He could have what? Taken that bold step and say, you know what? Let me go out there. Let me get the best animal. Let me kill it for myself and prepare it. But he was looking for what was ready made. A lot of us, we are looking for some things that are ready made. And because of that, we've been careless to lose what the Lord has given to us. We are looking for things that have been prepared, well done. Things that is what? Settled. And because of that, we are careless and we've what? Sold out our bat rights. Esau was careless because of what? Appetite. When you cannot, you know, contain your appetite. Look at the life of Jesus. He was someone that was not careless. Because what? Even when he has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, this is someone that should be hungry, famished, like in needed food. But he won't be careless because what the devil wants him to turn stone to bread. No. I know I'm hungry. I know I'm famished. But yet, I'm not going to take order from the devil to turn a stone to bread or because of what appetite. Esau lost everything. He lost his birthright because he couldn't take what a bold step to go and what look for what food for himself. He was looking for what was ready made. And because of that, it sold out his birthright. Ask yourself, look into yourself. I mean, are there things that you are desiring that are, oh, I want it ready made. I don't want stress for myself. And before you know it, you just see yourself, you know what, exchanging what the Lord has what, given to you because you choose not to what, go out. Esau is an hunter. I was wondering, why can't he? The same Esau was the one that even out to go back when his father wanted to bless them. He went back into that field to get what? To get an animal. He prepared it himself. So where did that strength come from? The Lord has given to us, you know, what we need. The Lord has deposited in us strength. But if we choose not to use it, we'll find ourselves being careless and we'll sell out our birthright. Another person that also sold out, you know, what the Lord has given to her because, because she chose to be careless is Dinah. You know, I call it Dinah the dinner because she, she imagine it turned out to be like what? She served the dinner for what? For she can, all because she was careless with time. If we look at Genesis 34, Genesis 34 from verse 1 to 4, it says, One day, Dinah, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local prince, Shechem, son of Ammon the Evite, saw Dinah, he seized her and raped her. He seized her and raped her. You don't seize what is occupied. This woman went and wondered, what are you looking for? We invited you. And you know, for so many young, you know, adults that sometimes you just feel like oh i need to go there i need to be there i need to visit this i need to visit that and in the course of you visiting all around being careless with the time that god has given to you she lost her virginity she was raped i felt so so heartbroken because in the next verse i think in um verse seven the brother simon was saying that this was not supposed to have happened. This shouldn't have occurred. There are some things that will happen in a man's life if the man chooses to be careless, even though it's never supposed to happen to him. It was never supposed to happen to Dinah that she was supposed to be raped. But because she chose to be careless with her time, her brothers were at the field. And I said to myself, why can't you join them? Why are you not in the field? We've heard of roots. 
that was gleaning in the field of Boaz. So don't say because you are a female, you can't do something. Get yourself equipped. And I don't mind, it's the devil's workshop. She chose to, you know, go around. And, you know, in this season, you know, Valentine is all uh, is, uh, um, around the corner. This is not the season for you to think, to start hanging out and, oh, yes, we need to do this, we need to be there. Yes, if you are engaged, have time with your loved ones. What am I trying to say is, don't be careless with time. You can't be careless. A young girl lost her virginity. She was careless because what she chose to work, visits. A visitation that she was never invited. Be careful with what you do. Don't abuse the luxurious time that God has given to you. Even if it seems as if, okay, for now you are not that busy. You can get yourself words, books to read. You can get yourself equipped, you know, with some skills. You can get yourself with a lot of words, messages on YouTube. Instead of you visiting, and in the course of her visiting, she was seized because she was jobless and she was raped. As much as it may look as if, oh, she came, he now said, oh, I'm in love with her. I want to marry her. I want her. Father, please marry her for me. Yes, it may look like, yes, you love her, but the deed has been done. It has been recorded and now she was raped. Simon said, it's never, in verse 7, they were shocked. Okay, meanwhile, Jacob's son had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious that their sister had been raped. She came and done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, something that should never be done. It shouldn't have happened. And remember, Dinah happened to be the first and the only daughter. What a shame. I thought she was going to leave a legacy. I thought she was going to leave what, you know, something positive for other females that will be coming behind. But because she chose to be careless, and this happened to her. Carelessness and abuse, you know, cost a man a whole lot. I defined abuse as failure to preserve what you have in excess. When the Lord has given you something and you look as if, oh, this is an excess. If you fail to preserve it, if you fail to keep it, whether in monetary wise, whether in relationship, you know, some people, they are so blessed that they have good relationship with people, good rapport with people. But if you don't preserve such relationship, or maybe you even have relationship with some big, you know, big um, echelons, or maybe people in the woods. You know, I would like call it people in the you know great sector in things that they are doing, and you found that what you are not preserving it before you know it, such is going to come into what it's going to be in futility because what you don't preserve when you have it in excess is going to turn out to be bad. And also, carelessness I define it as failure to give due attention to what is vital or important. When something is of importance and you don't pay, I mean, rapt attention to, you don't give it your all. You don't pay attention to it. It shows that what you're careless and whatsoever you're careless with, trust me, it's going to turn out to be bad. There's also another person that was careless with his vow. You know, this part actually broke my heart. Oh, I was, I, 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 I literally wept. And that's the life of what? Jephthah. Jephthah happens to be someone, you know, they, they actually look into Judges because of our time. Judges chapter 11, verse 29 to 36. You know, I'm just going to give a summary of the word story. They want to go into a world, into a fight with what? With the Amorites. And because it feels that, oh, we might not be able to conquer them. And it said to the Lord, that, Lord, if you can give me victory over this Amorite, that will so ever, anything that is going to come out of my house, that is going to come out from my house first, that is what I'm going to what, give back to you. That is what I'm going to dedicate to you. You know, as much as it looks as if, yes, this is a man that he, he wants to show his appreciation to God, if God has given him victory. But on the other hand, the flip side, happens to be that what his only daughter 
that had no brother, that had no sister, was what? Was the one that what came out. A girl that was so happy. A girl that was full of life. You know, celebrating the father's victory. Coming to say, oh, daddy, you've done it. You know, the Lord has given you this victory. Little did she know that she will be sacrificed because her father was careless with his vow. And I'm saying to us, as young adults, maybe you are not even engaged now, or maybe there's something you are looking onto the Lord for, and you are saying to God, God, if you can give me this job, if you can give me this or that, oh, myself and my husband, myself and my future partner, myself and my children, these people are not even in, the, we're not, these people are not even in, in picture yet. And you're already putting them into a covenant, into a vow that you don't know what is going to happen in the future. Trust me, the Lord does not need your vow to do what he wants to do in your life. So be careful. Don't be careless with your vow. Don't be careless with word, especially when it comes to, you know, putting in um, other people that what, that have no, I mean, no idea of what you what you pledge to God. For a wife, if you are going to do anything, at least you're going to talk to your husband, oh, this is what I want to do, and I'm thinking of pledging this and that. You have your husband to talk to. But having to pledge, you know, with someone that is not in the picture yet, it's like you putting that person in what pressure and in danger ahead. Because you never can tell what kind of a life or what the person will go into that is if it's going to work for what? For the vow that you pledge or against it. A young girl, a virgin, was sacrificed, ended her life, all because the father made a what? A careless vow. Look within you. Be sure that even when you're seeking the Lord, you know, for the things that you want him to do, be careful of the kind of vow that you are making so that you don't put your what? Your fellow, you know, maybe your family in jeopardy. Also, another person that was careless was Cain. Cain was careless with the time of repentance. You remember when the Lord asked them to sacrifice, this is in Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 8. When the Lord asked him and his brother to work, to bring sacrifice, it was time for them to offer their harvest to the Lord. The Lord was not concerned about, you know, whether it's a small, you know, then when we were growing up, I was always thinking, oh, maybe because Cain sacrificed something that was small, or oh, Cain brought, you know, something from the ground. That was not the problem of God. It was all about the person, the person of Cain. And the Lord had to come to him, giving him another chance. That, oh, Cain, if you had done this good, won't you be accepted? You know, that's a way to come to him that, you know what, you can do it better. Why not go back? Why not retrace your step? If you had offered another one, you know, better. If you have, you know what, made yourself much more presentable, acceptable before the Lord, I would have accepted your sacrifice too. The Lord was giving me another opportunity to do or to repent, to do it better. But it was killer. I don't care. And because of that, he became the first murderer in the Bible. The Lord might be looking at you and be saying to you, I'm calling you, come back to repentance. This thing that you are doing, this might look small you know, before you. Don't turn into a murderer later. What is that thing that you are doing? And the Lord is what? You know, bringing your heart to it so that you can what? Retrace your step. Remember the prodigal son, he came back to his senses. So maybe the Lord has been bringing some things to you now so that you can come back to your senses before the worst happens. Don't turn their fear to what the Lord is saying. Don't be careless about the time of your repentance. No matter what you've done and you know that the Lord is breaking your heart, it's in, you know, you just have to what, take that opportunity right there and right now so that the worst do not happen. Also, another person that was careless was Reuben. Reuben is such a person that what I appreciate and I, you know, let me say, I adore so much. Number one, he's the, the firstborn. He happened to come at the time that what, you know, Leah, his mother, was not loved by Jacob. But the time that he came, I'm sure that his birth will have what, brought comfort to the mother. 
Also, when the brothers wanted to sell out um, Joseph, this was someone that even when they were planning to what, sell him out, he was thinking that, okay, in my mind, I'm going to come back and take Joseph. You can see the love. You can see, you know, the kind of heart that what, that Reuben had because he went back, you know, to check and see that, oh, Joseph was not there. So it shows that what is a man that was is full of compassion. But something happened. Joseph was, I mean, Reuben was careless with his emotion. He was careless with his feelings. Maybe, you know, I don't know his age, but whichever age that he might have been, I'm sure those hormones, those, you know, dopamine and serotonin, you know, jumping up in his body and he's feeling like, oh my goodness, oh, this age, I just need to just, you know, I just need to have this woman. And he was, did something careless by going to sleep with his father's concubine. That's in Genesis chapter 35. We can look at it. Genesis 35, verse 21. Yes, Genesis 35, verse 21 to 22. Then Jacob traveled on and camped beyond Megdal Ida. While he was living there, Reuben had intercourse with Bila, his father's concubine, and Jacob soon heard about it. You know, one thing that was so saddening me about this, this uh, particular verse is that the father heard about this and he kept quiet. And he just, you know, he just let it slide. Like, okay, as if nothing is going on. You know, it doesn't matter. It's fine. But something happened later in what? In chapter 49. It's looking like what? He gave him like 14, maybe let's say for each chapter, let's say it's like one month or one year. Let's say one month. Let me just, you know, at least make it closer. So giving him a space of 14 months and he kept quiet over what a careless act that this man committed, his son, he was looking. And look at, in that verse um, 22, after he had done that act, the next thing that I saw in that line was, these are the names of, of the 12 sons of Jacob. In my mind, I'm like, Reuben has committed an act that he was careless about. And, you know, the next thing that we are seeing now is they are mentioning names. The sons of Leah, we are Reuben. They even still call him into his what? His position, that firstborn position. Not knowing. He may look as he may appear that what? That he was called as the firstborn here. But trust me, he already lost that position. He was not chosen anymore. So sometimes when we are careless with some acts, it may appear before others that so things are going on well. They are even still hailing you. Oh, that's brother this. Oh, that's our this. Oh, the man of God. But trust me, the position might have what has changed already because of a careless act. Because you are not, you know, you are not, you didn't tame that with your, your emotions. In chapter 49, see what happened to the um, Reuben, all because of that careless act. Chapter Genesis 49, verse 1 to 4. Then Jacob called all his, all his sons and said, Gather around me and I will tell you what will happen to each, to each of you in the days to come. Come and listen, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength. You are my strength, the child of my vigorous youth. You are first in rank and first in power, but you are as unruly as flood, and you will be forced no longer. For you went to bed with my wife and defied my marriage couch. He did this in chapter 35. Towards the later part, before Genesis is going to what, wrap up, they give him his results. All through from chapter 35 till um, chapter 48, 
Ruben will be acting and feeling like, oh, I'm still the firstborn, right? But no, he lost the position already because of a careless act. So sometimes when we act carelessly, the position that the Lord has placed us, you know, the place of authority that the Lord has what ordained for us might have what might have shifted. Just like Adam too, he was in the garden, yet missing. God was saying, where are you? Where are thou? And I'm like, someone that is in the garden, why are you still asking, where is he? It shows that there is a place of authority. There's a place of power that God expects him to be, but he wasn't there anymore. Or because he was careless too. Careless, he left his wife Eve, discussing with what? With the serpents. You know, when we look at another life, you know, of couple that was, that were also careless, Joseph and Mary, that's in Luke chapter 2, verse 43. And that place was talking about how Joseph and Mary, you know, after they've gone, you know, they had the festive, they were about going home, they returned home, all to find out what Jesus was not even with them. How can you be a mother? How can you be a father? And you are not in the place where your child is. I want to believe every parent, you know, want to see to it that wherever their child is, I want to be there. I want to be sure that I know what my child is doing. And I'm saying to we, you know, excuse me, as parents on this platform, see to it, don't be careless as parents that you are too involved in something and yet you don't even know where your child is. If they are on phone, you can what? It's part of the sacrifice. Be with them on that phone. Be with them on the iPad. You know, I'm talking for those of us that were, we are just coming up with what? With toddlers, with preschoolers, you know? So that what? We don't leave them to the hands of the word enemy. You want to see to it that you know what your child is doing. Play with them. Be with them. Don't just leave them. Don't leave Jesus out of your life. As youths. Ask yourself, hope you are not careless in such a way that now Jesus has what is, I mean, has left your life. He's looking as if there is no more Jesus. You might still be journeying, you know, and Joseph and Mary, they were on a journey, not knowing that what Jesus already left. In this season, especially I'm calling to us, you know, especially at female, in this season of years, Valentine in the air, don't be careless to open your legs. And also as brothers, don't be careless. I don't, I don't think I ever hear the word zip down. It's always zip up. Don't be careless that what that your words that you are loose. Because the place of authority that the Lord has given to you, you don't want to use that careless act. Look at the life of Ruben. He would never have believed that what that his position has changed. He would never have thought that his position was what already what transferred to someone else because of that one day careless act. Don't be. But trust me, we have so many other people too that were what, that were very careful, you know, with their life, that they didn't abuse what God has given to them. And the first person is our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was faced with temptation, someone that could have, you know, decided to turn was stone to bread because he was hungry. He didn't. He had the power. He had the authority. When you have power and authority with you, what do you do to it? Do you abuse it or you are careless with it? Jesus would not do that. And so you should not. Also, there is a man that I love in the Bible. In Numbers chapter 25, we can look at it together. His name is Phineas. Numbers 25, from verse, you can reach that from verse 1. I'm just going to, yes, why? Okay, let me just take it from, from verse 6. Well, because just because of our time from Vexit. Just then one of the Israelite men 
brought a Midianite woman into a tent right before the eyes of Moses and all the people as everyone was weeping at the entrance of the tabernacle. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron the priest, saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into his tent. Phineas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the Israelites stopped, but not before 24,000 people had died. You know, this is just a story I would have loved to read it from the beginning, but because of our time, this is a story about what the Israelites, when they come, you know, they were into sexual relation, um, relation with what? With the, the mobile what, women. And because of this, they begin to what introduce their God to the Israelites. But there was a man, Phineas. He saw the act that was going on and he's not going to stay back because what? he chose to be what? To stand for what? For purity. And so also we too as Christians, when we are among our um, believers, when we are in the midst of people, are we going to what? be careless and be like, well, everybody can do what they like. Let me just be on my own. Or we are going to stand and take what responsibility when it comes to what putting things in order. This was a man that what he said he went into that tent, and because of what he did, imagine the plague that was upon what the Israelites stopped. Even God Himself, He said, he, God said in verse ten. Then the Lord said to Moses. Phineas, son of Elias, a grandson of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away. <laughs> Imagine, just one man had that power to turn the anger of God away because he chose to do the right thing. He was not careless. He stood for what was right. Also, another person that was what, that was very careful, that was not careless with what, with food, was that little boy. If you remember, that's in John chapter 6, from verse 1 to 13, a little boy that had that five loaves of bread and two fishes. If a boy can be holding on to five loaves, you should know that this is a boy that mother, eh, he must have eaten, but he saw that what? I was given excess. Let me keep it. Let me wait. I think I've heard about Jesus. I know what he can do. It's possible that with these five loaves, he can feed every one of us. He was not what, you know, careless about eating everything that was given to him. A little boy that saved a, what, 5,000 men. Not even what, in addition with the women and what, and the children. All because he chose to be what, to be careful. He didn't abuse the food. He didn't abuse the excess that he had. He didn't abuse it. He had to preserve what he had to save what, I mean, to save a whole lot of people. A little boy. So whatsoever that you have in your end that the Lord has given to you could be what a preservation for some people. Don't, don't, don't just waste it or use it anyhow. Preserve it because it could be needed. And also the Syrophoenician woman. This was a woman that her daughter was what, you know, had, you know, was possessed, right? And she came to Jesus and Jesus was still telling her that, I'm sorry, I can't give the food that belongs to what the children to dogs. How many of us can take it that someone calling you a dog? That alone could make the woman to be careless with what and like, oh, Jesus, what is it? I only ask for healing and you are here lashing me words. Please, I beg, hold your healing. But no, she was not careless with that word. She even said yes. In fact, she, posi she even positioned that. She said, you know what? Even the word, the dogs under the table we are not just dog alone, but we are even under the table. And God, Jesus, will, don't worry. The demons have left your words. I've left your daughter. A woman chose not to be careless with what? Because of the salvation, because of what? Of her daughter. How many of us can take such insult when you are working with people, when you have your boss? You know, sometimes God can place you with some people that might be so temperate and, you know, say some words to you, but you never can tell what the Lord wants to use them to even do in your own life. But, you know, if you are just that kind of person that is not careful with the words of your mouth, you might just would, that child will have just died if the mother was so what, you know, 
razz or maybe she just began to say some, you know, arch words or some words and, you know, kind of words like that. Look into your life and ask yourself, where is it that I've been careful and careless with time, relationship, with words, with food, you know, in so many ways, even with what emotions, feelings have given us, you know, different kind of um, example. And there are so many. Even if you look at the life of Samson, you know, he was careless. If you look at the life of King Herod, of, you know, this is was this was a man that was that actually, you know, I know he, he had um respect for John the Baptist, but he was also careless when he was saying to that girl, you know what, just ask me anything. He never knew that the what the value was going to make the I mean the proposal I was going to make was going to make John um, John the Baptist head to be on the plates. So sometimes when we are making some vows or we are saying some words, we have to be careful because it could make the words the head of your neighbor or you know what the glory of your neighbor or even the fruit of your neighbor to be on the word on the platter of good in the hand of the enemy that does not even care about it. Because at the end of it, what would they use the end of John the Baptist to do? So I want us to look into ourselves because I'm dropping up that if there be any way, I want you to look into your life that I'll use the words of my mouth, you know, what to change that which the Lord asked for me. It could be in what in your destiny or even for your for your friend or even for family too. That you might have said something that Lord in your mercy. In your mercy, oh God, change, oh God, that which the words of my mouth have already altered. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. That Lord, every meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth that have delayed, that has cost uh, me a whole lot. That Lord, today in your mercy, let there be transformation in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And lastly, before I hand over to Uncle Taiwo, I want to see that I want to share my experience with you. I remember, you know, back home, you know, when you just finished high school, you have to write jam, you know, sometimes jam, jam, you, I mean, it's an exam, sorry. Jam is actually an exam that you take, you know, before you enter into the university. You know, you that you're here, you're so lucky once you finish, you get into um, a college or university. Good. But in Nigeria, sometimes it takes time. And sometimes you might even you, you might have even gotten the admission. I remember I got an admission in the last two. You already have your admission. And before you know it, the time for admission came. Your name is no more on the list because some people are the what they had power. But what am I trying to say is this? I'm trying to share an experience that I had. So there's this my neighbor that is a senior of mine, you know in um, high school he has not also gotten into the college and in my heart you know kind person i was saying in my heart oh god god i want that this person should enter school should be in the, um, the college before me just because i just had that in mind and i just you know i thought it in my mind do you know that was what happened not until this person got into university that was when i was able to get my own admission and what am i trying to say is that words are powerful we can't be careless with our thoughts we can't be careless with the things we do no matter what you do you know i was telling my younger brother on sunday when we are coming you know to the church that even as much as we desire good things for our people but you don't know how god has orchestrated our life god might say that you might be the first you know you may be the last one but god is saying this time around i want you to take the step first even the life of John the Baptist, he was the forerunner, right? But he had to come first. Jesus is the Messiah. But the forerunner had to come first before the Messiah. John the Baptist would not say, oh, no, don't let me come first. He's the Messiah. No, there's a way the Lord has orchestrated things to happen. And so don't let us talk out, you know, our destiny in the programming of the Lord. I pray that as we begin to journey more with the Lord, the Lord will begin to, you know, caution us and, you know, order our words, our words and our step into his destiny for our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Over to you. Yes, Uncle Taiwo. Yes, Uncle Taiwo. Um, I I have just few words to add to it <clears throat> before we pray for you. Does anyone want to add to what Sister Tosin has said? I know the topic was very deep, very very deep. Anyone? 
Is there anything, Minister, to you within just two minutes? You want to add anything to it? In terms of carelessness? Maybe while she was ministering, Holy Spirit also inspire you on other areas, you know, anyone? Okay. In the absence of none. Uh, just that also may the Lord continue to strengthen you. We pray for more grace, uh, more revelation. May the Lord continue to give you a deeper knowledge, a deeper knowledge of his word. Uh, one area that, you know, she mentioned, I, I really advise, you know, um, everyone to go listen to it. Um, by God's grace, it should be on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, but I would really advise everyone to go listen to it again and just um, meditate on it, meditate on it. Um, it really touched me a lot personally because she was able to touch different areas of carelessness. And one area that I know that has affected many generations before us and that affect generations every season is carelessness with association. Carelessness with association. Please, I encourage you, I encourage you, if you want to fly high, you want to minimize pain, regret, um, 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 reproach, shame, retrogression, limitation, stagnation, be extremely careful who you choose to bring into your circle. Be extremely careful who the kind of association you want to be around, around your family, please, I beg you, association is a very, very, very significant thing. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people are very, there's nothing wrong you having colleagues at work that smokes, that drinks, but when it comes to people you bring to your home, people, you know, <laughs> yesterday, Holy Spirit was telling me something. I was just meditating. Holy Spirit said, do I realize, I believe it was today, it was actually today. Holy Spirit said, okay, did you realize that Jesus had many disciples? In the book of Matthew, we realize that Joseph Arimathea, the rich guy, his name was never disclosed that this guy was a disciple until Jesus died. And he used his own influence to get Jesus' body out. And he bought the tomb that Jesus was buried was meant for him. Jesus had association, disciples. He was associated, you know, connected to different people. You know, he went to the Matthew, the tax collector. You know, he went to many places. Holy Spirit now asked me, he said, but did you realize that when it comes to intimacy, you only take few people? Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. When it comes to the place of intimacy, please, I encourage you. I encourage you. The Lord will strengthen you. Don't be ashamed to, to separate yourself. Don't be ashamed to be alone. I've seen people who are older than me. I've seen people of my age bracket that they find relevance in association. They find their significance, their confidence is an association. No, I know these are the things teenagers go through. I went through it, you know, but you must get to a point in life where you realize that your confidence is not who is around you. Your confidence is who is inside of you. What will reside inside of you is greater than those who are around you. I want us to pray and tell God that Lord, for everyone who has been a blessing to us so far this year, Lord, uphold them. Everyone who has ministered on this platform this year, Lord, they will not fall. Their words that they have preached to us will not be used against them. 
that the Lord will uphold them. They will not be put to shame. The Lord will use them mightily. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Lord, I say thank you. Lord, we commit those you have used from January to this moment on this platform, Lord. Lord, uphold them, uphold them, uphold them, uphold them, uphold them, Lord, uphold them. These words that you have put in their lips will not be used against them, O oh God. Lord, strengthen them. Give them a deeper revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray one more prayer and tell the Lord, Lord, let all that belongs to me this season. Lord, I will not lose everything that belongs to me this season. I will not lose all that belongs to me this season. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. I will not lose all that belongs to me this season. I will not lose your direction. I will not lose your voice. I will not lose the blessing. I will not lose the favor. I will not lose all that belongs to me this season. I will not lose you. I will not lose you. My wife will not lose all that belongs to you this season. We will not lose all that belongs to us this season. We will not lose all that belongs to us this season. In Jesus' name we pray. And lastly, I want us to tell the Lord, Lord, visit me tonight, Lord. Visit me, oh God. Visit me. Visit me for a change, for transformation. Visit me. Put in me new hunger, new hunger. Help me to embrace a change. Help me to embrace change. Help me to embrace change. Help me to embrace change. Visit me for transformation. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Visit me for transformation. Visit me, visit me, visit me. Help me to embrace change. Help me to embrace change. Help my wife to embrace change. Help me to embrace change. Help me to embrace change. Lord, visit me for transformation. Encounter us tonight. Encounter us tonight. Encounter us tonight. Encounter us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, we commit your sons and daughters before you. The Bible says, it shall not stand. God see the Lord. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. I decree every agenda of darkness against your life, against your family, against your siblings, against your children. I decree it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. I decree it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I decree by the power and the blood of Jesus. Every agenda of darkness, every evil, every pain, every tears, every thing that is not of God, projected against your life. This season, this year, I decree it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I decree let new doors begin to open. New doors of job opportunities. New doors of direction. New doors of wisdom. New doors. New openings. New doors. New doors. New breakthroughs. Father, let your name alone be exalted. As we go to bed tonight, encounter us. We soak everyone in the blood of Jesus. New grace, new strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Once again, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, this is a quick reminder once again that the Garden of the Eagles for this Saturday is going to be starting 4.30. So please um, kindly connect, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can connect with us for those who are in school who are not in Jersey right now, can send the link to your friends and family. It's going to be an intense atmosphere of worship. Um, it's a season that we have to prepare for what is ahead. The, the topic for this month for the Garden of the Eagles is contending for the faith of our fathers. And the reason why we are about to contend for this faith is because of the days ahead of us. We need to build capacity in faith. Brethren, I'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brother Tower. Thank you, Sister. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny.